we're learning how to overcome our past, overcome our present, and move into God's future. Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. You know, I so much look forward to us meeting together like this to talk about the things of God. And you ever, do you ever get where you're just waiting for a move of God in your life? You know, you'll, it's like, God, I know you're going to move in my life. God, I know there's something else you've got for me in this season. And you know, sometimes you can be waiting for a move of God in the same way like a kid is waiting for Christmas. I mean, you've been a kid, I've been a kid, we know what it's like, you know, one of the longest times in the whole year is that time period from Thanksgiving to Christmas. You know, there's this longing and this excitement, you know, about the day when all the presents are going to be there and, you know, the things we've been hoping for are going to finally be here for us and our desires will be fulfilled. And, you know, kids just live and breathe and hope with anticipation for Christmas. And, you know, somehow we've lost that as adults. And, you know, not just for Christmas, but for many things. You know, some of us have lost that zeal and that excitement just for being alive. You know, some have lost our excitement for God himself. You know, like, what are you waiting for in life? What are you waiting for God to do? Are you desiring anything special, looking forward to another move of God in your life? What are you expecting to receive? Are you looking for anything special from the Lord? I pray that you are, because those that seek shall find. And you know, we have to believe in who we are in Jesus. You can't be in Christ and be just regular and ordinary. Just the fact that you've sought the Lord and found Him makes you different from other people. It keeps you from being just a random person. You know, it means that you're not mediocre. And in these days, that what we're doing, we're learning how to overcome our past, overcome our present, and move into God's future. Some of us are learning how to receive under pressure. And we're learning how to get beyond our past and move into God's future, to get past our history so we can embrace our destiny. We're learning how to live in the presence of God. In the Gospel of Luke, there are two people who generally get left out of Christmas plays, and you don't find them on Christmas cards, but God made sure that you would find them in the Gospel of Luke. And he's got a message for us in their lives. One is a man named Simeon, and the other is a woman named Anna. And they were both old, living at a time in their lives where all the really cool stuff has already happened. You know, and there really isn't too much left to be excited about anymore. They'd had enough hurts and felt enough disappointment, had enough joys, maybe had enough prayers answered, you know, and they figured, well, you know, God's just kind of letting me hang around here. But God puts them in his book because these two people, this man and this woman, never gave up. You have to learn how to be a person who never gives up. Both of them kept their hope alive. You have to keep your hope alive. You have to keep your belief alive. You have to keep your faith going. And they were hoping and they were both expecting. They were both keeping their faith alive and keeping on when it came to believing God is still going to do something. And God begins telling us about Simeon in Luke's gospel, chapter 2 and verse 25, where it said there was a man of Jerusalem called Simeon. And it says he was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the comfort of Israel. And, and God also says the Holy Spirit was upon him. And you know, we have access to a domain that's outside this world. That's what gives us a perspective that is very different than the world around us. It's not limited to what's logical, reasonable, rational. It's not limited to what's on social media. It's not limited to what we're hearing about on the news or the podcast. It's about the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And I want you to notice something. God says Simeon was righteous. God says Simeon was devout. You know, you're doing pretty well when God says that about you and has it recorded in his word for all people everywhere to read about you. Simeon was righteous and Simeon was devout. But guess what? It wasn't his righteousness. It was the righteousness of God by faith. And he was devoted to God. That's what the word devout means. But even so, he still had some unanswered prayers in his life. He was wanting that comfort that only God can give. He was waiting for Jesus, the promised Messiah, but so far, nothing had happened. Have you ever felt like that? You're waiting and waiting and nothing's happened? You're doing right, you're living right, you're praying right, you've searched your heart, and still you're waiting for that answer, for that consolation, that comfort that only comes from God. And I want you to notice, 
that God says the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. And you may have the Holy Spirit upon you, and you may still be waiting for your answer. I hope that encourages you. Then down to verse 26, it shows that Simeon was hanging on to something. He has a reason for his hope and his expectation, because it says that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And no matter who you are, there are times when you just need to be comforted. When you were little, you could run to your mom and she would comfort you. You know, when you got older, you might have to run to your mom and she might have still said, hey, don't come to me. You brought all this on yourself. Well, that's what happened to me, at least when I got older. I'd bring it on myself. But we all have those times when we feel alone and misunderstood and lonely and empty and scared and tired of it all. And the only thing we can even hope for is that comfort, that consolation that can only come from God. That's what Simeon was waiting for. You know, people all around us, as well as you and me, feel those same things. We all have struggles and we all need to be comforted. And year after year, the Christmas season is one of the major times of year that people fall into depression and loneliness and consider suicide even. And I want you to know that the Holy Spirit led Simeon and guided his steps to bring him to the right place at the right time. He showed up just at the right time on the right day when Joseph and Mary were bringing the baby Jesus to the temple. Even when you're not feeling especially hopeful or especially expectant, the Holy Spirit still can guide you and he can still lead you and he's able to get you where you need to be and get you there right on time with the people you need to be with. And as soon as Simeon saw the baby Jesus, who would have been about mm, six weeks old at this time, he knew that his prayers had been answered and that God had kept his promise. In Luke 2 verse 28, it says that Simeon was able to pick up the baby Jesus from Mary and hold him. Simeon was holding Jesus and he began praising God. You know, there's something about being in the presence of Jesus that makes you want to praise God. When you get a hold of Jesus, you can begin to praise God. That's Simeon. And then there's Anna. She was another person who had already had a long life. She'd been through troubles. She'd been through dangers. She'd been through loss. She'd been through heartache and hurt and disappointment. Her husband had died years before, and now she's a widow living in the temple. In other words, she was homeless. After her husband died, she dedicated herself to fasting and praying and living there in the temple. And Anna was also waiting on the Lord to do something. She was waiting for deliverance, for the redemption of Israel, for the forgiving power of God to begin to be activated among God's people. It's in Luke 2.38 where it says, Coming up to them at that very moment, she gives thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. You know, the word redemption is related to the idea of being sold, enslaved, and then bought back for your freedom. And many of us know how it feels to have been sold out to the enemy, to have been betrayed by loved ones, to be rejected by those who ought to have cared about us. Betrayal is one of the deepest pains a person can feel. And when Anna saw Jesus, she gave thanks to God and recognized that the time of redemption was being released on the earth. She knew that here was the one who would save his people from their sins. You know, it doesn't matter how much you've been betrayed. God can still redeem you and put that broken heart back together. You might just feel like it's all been too much, and I want you to know that our God is the more than enough God who specializes in taking broken people and putting them back together again. That's what he did for me. Whatever it is that you're hoping for, whatever it is that you're waiting for, God can give it to you through Jesus Christ. And you might feel an awful lot like Simeon, you might be seriously hurting right now. You might feel lonely and empty and afraid, maybe stressed out, and you need God's comfort. You need a fresh sense of God's presence, and that's what Simeon found. It may be that you just relate to Anna. You know, she was looking forward to the arrival of Jesus as the one who forgives sin, who rights the wrongs, who cleans up those who are dirty and bound and messed up. And you might be feeling that right now, that's what you need, that need for forgiveness for something you've done or the way you've been living. You might feel like you're trapped in a pattern of sin that you can't break out of. I'm here to tell you that if you need forgiveness, Jesus can give it to you right now. I can think of no better time than now for him to do just that. 
but it won't just happen. Look at verse 27. It says, moved by the Spirit, he went to the temple courts. You need to let the Holy Spirit move you out of that place of defeat and into the place of praise and worship to move you into that place in the presence of God. You know, I read about Anna where it says coming up to them at that very moment she gave thanks to God. You have to do something in order to receive something, in order to be something. When the Holy Spirit prompted them to take action, they didn't just sit there whining like a lot of people do. They did something. They got into the presence of God. When God prompts you to do something, you need to do it. It might mean salvation. It might mean full surrender for some people. It may be the Holy Spirit just wants you to be more involved in serving people. Maybe you're sensing him asking you to do something more in your life. Are you willing to take action? Don't put off when God prompts you to do something. You may miss out on a miracle in your life. Then there's outreach, talking to other people, inviting other people. You know, it said there that Anna gave thanks to God and spoke about Jesus to all who are looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Notice her joy. Here she is speaking to people about him. And joy is the atmosphere of heaven. That's the environment that God creates wherever he goes. Only one way to live life in the Spirit, and that's joyfully. You know, in the book of James, it says we should just count it all joy. Jesus said in John 15, 11, I've told you this so my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. And you know, God wants to use you to reach people with this life-changing gospel of Jesus. And your Bible is this immense book of promises. God is a promise maker and a promise keeper. Someone said that everything in heaven is geared towards bringing God's promises to pass. And God can do anything. You know, if God needed a perfect person to use, he wouldn't have chosen you. God loves people with issues and problems and low self-esteem. God chooses people who have issues. People that have things that we might think disqualifies them. And it all comes under his grace. God chose you because of who he is and because of who you're not. And God's going to transform your life. God wants you to get it, to have it, to enjoy it have abundant life to give away. And the Lord gives you words because he has a destiny for you. Your whole life runs on the plan of God, the mission of God that he has sent you here for. And I pray that you open your heart and ask Jesus right now to move in your heart, to fill you with his comfort. That's it. To fill you with his love. To fill you with his forgiveness. You acknowledge, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. Use me, Jesus. Fill me with your love. Fill me with your spirit. I love you, Lord. I want to be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, make that your prayer. Amen. And always remember, please pray for me. Thank you and God bless you. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.